Hey guys, what is going on? In this video, we are going to be talking about polymorphism inside of C++. We're gonna scratch the surface. This is a pretty complex topic and it can get pretty, uh, pretty intense. But what we're gonna do is we're basically going to teach you how to create teachers, but use them as if they're users, but they will do the teacher stuff. So that probably makes absolutely no sense without the context of basically going through an example. So that's what we're gonna do in this video, but first you need to check out our sponsor, Embarcadero Rad Studio. Rad Studio is the IDE of choice for C++ development. Quickly build native, mobile, and desktop applications from a single C++ code base and deploy to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. With Rad Studio, user interface design has been made easy with hundreds of pre-built components for cross-platform development. You can easily integrate with popular source control management systems, databases, APIs, and you can make your life easier with numerous third-party extensions. Let Rad Studio do the heavy lifting when it comes to C++ development. Give it a go with a free trial by following the link in the description. All right, so first thing, you might wanna check out the previous video because there I talk about inheritance and how a teacher inherits from a user. But a teacher is also considered a user. Kind of think of it as like, you know, if you had a class for an animal and a class for a dog. Well, a dog is also an animal. That is how the inheritance hierarchy works. So compared to that video, I did a little bit of cleanup. So the teacher header just looks like this. All we have is this class is teaching and this function output. And then if you wanna see the, the actual output for that, all you have to do is go to the CPP file and see it says that I am a teacher. Now inside a main, we create this teacher. And what we can do is we can make a reference to this teacher in a similar nature to how we can have reference parameters. So those variables are just references to the, the arguments we pass in. So we can do a similar thing here, but we can make it of type user. So it might look something like user, we can name it whatever we want. We can just call it you. And we'll assign that the value teacher. So this is making a reference to a user, but the thing is teacher is actually of type teacher, but because a teacher inherits from user, if you look at the class, you can see teacher inherits from user, this should work. So when we compile, we shouldn't get any complaining. So let's just give it a try. And I think I accidentally removed include teacher here. So teacher.h. All right, now let's give this compilation a try. Awesome. So the thing is now you is of type user, but it's going to act as a teacher. So when would this actually come up? Well, what we could do is say you dot output. And if you look at the teacher class, this is one of the, the methods inside of the teacher class. So let's compile and see what happens. All right, so we're getting an error, no member named output in user. So it's not quite working. And that's because you is still technically a user. So we need to create this function inside of that user object. So if we go over to user.h, what we're gonna do is we're just going to say void output. So that's that function, but we're going to add a special word before it, virtual. And that means we can basically override it in the subclasses. Now we're also going to create the function for if you're just working with a user. So inside a user.cpp, we're going to go in here and say user colon colon output and this is a void function, and what is it gonna do? It's just going to say, I am a user. Okay, so now let's go back to main and compile. And you can see that it works, and when we run, we get I am a teacher. Wow, that's pretty cool. U is of type user, but it's printing I am a teacher. Now, if we went to the user.h file and changed virtual to not virtual and compiled and ran, What's going to happen now is it says I am a user. So that virtual is an essential keyword to enabling us to do polymorphism. Basically, it enables us to override that function in the child. So make sure you put that virtual keyword in there and don't forget about that. The cool thing here is that you can create other subclasses of user and they will always do the, the child version of the method call. So in other words, we can create a bunch of subclasses that all inherit from user. We can treat them as users, but they will do the subclass versions of the methods. So to go through another example of this, I created another file and this is a student. And this is what it looks like. Very similar to the teacher. In fact, it's almost identical. It inherits from user and has a function output. The only difference is I did get rid of classes teaching because that doesn't really make sense in the context of a student. If you wanna see the implementation, well, student.cpp, all it says is I am a student. 
So if you wanted to see this in action, inside a main, all we'd have to do is say include, and we could say student.h. Now we can make a student as well. And we can treat it as a user, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a reference. We'll just call this u1 and u2. And we'll make this one assign the teacher and the second one assign the student. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say u1.output and we're gonna say u2.output. So these are both users, but when we run this, make sure when you compile, you include the student.cpp. Now when we run this, look what happens. The first one says, I am a teacher, and the second one says, I am a student. But because these are user objects, you can treat them as user objects. So for example, we could create a function and we could just say void, do something, and this can take a user. And then what we can do in here is say user.output, and it's going to output basically the same exact thing, but you can understand the concept of passing a teacher and a student to a function that requires a user. So then instead of saying u1.output, what we can say is do something and pass in u1 and do something and pass in u2. Now when we run this, it's going to say, I am a user, I am a user. So what is going on here? Well, we actually need to pass this as a reference in order for this to work, so that way it points to exactly the same objects, which are typed as teacher and student. So now when we run it, it says, I am a teacher, I am a student. All right, so that is the basics of polymorphism. I hope that was helpful for you guys. The main concept is that you can change the type of something depending on how you look at it, whether you look at it as a teacher or you look at it as a user. So thank you guys for watching. That kind of concludes our section on object-oriented programming. I know there's much more to cover, but maybe we'll save that for a uh, part two of this series. We'll see. Thank you guys for watching. Please be sure to subscribe if you've enjoyed this content. It would really mean the world to me, and I'm super grateful. All right, I'll see you in the next video, guys.